Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Currently, I'm working at Queens North Hawaii Community Hospital. It's nice to working in Hawaii during the winter time. Today, we will discuss brain tumor. For the past five years, there have been tremendous developments in the clinical field of brain tumor. For example, WHO reclassified the brain tumors, which is still evolving. New biotechnology provides newer and more information about cancer molecular genetics, which can determine the treatment response to certain uh, therapy and to predict prognosis. Using this information, newer treatments such as target therapy or immunotherapy are actively under investigation. Let's discuss more in detail. And thank you for watching. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, and it consists of nerve tissues, including nerve cells called the neuron, and the glial cells, which are supporting cells helping neurons, and the meninges, the protective membrane uh, wrapping the brain and spinal cord. Main glial cells are astrocyte, oligodendrocyte, and the ependymal cell. The instance of primary brain tumor is about 3 out of 10,000. Glial tumors, glioblastoma, astrocytoma, oligodendroglioma, and the meningiomas are most common, accounting for two-thirds of all primary brain tumors in adults. Glioblastoma is part of the astrocytoma, but this is the most aggressive and is the most common malignant primary brain tumor in adults with a median age of onset of 64 years. Meningioma is the most common brain tumor of all and is mostly benign. The cause of primary brain tumors are mostly unknown, although some reports the uh, some genetic family syndrome and the exposure to uh, radiation have been associated with the brain tumor. The brain has frontal lobe, temporal, parietal, and the occipital lobes. Those four lobes are called cerebrum. Please look at this picture. The cerebrum has a two halves, right hemisphere and the left hemisphere, which are connected uh, internally. When you slice that brain and take a look at inside, you will see the gray matter outside and the white matter uh, inside. Gray matter consists of neuron bodies and the astrocytes, and the white matter neuron axons we will discuss later in the next slide. And the, below this cerebrum, you will see the cerebellum, which has a function of body positioning and the equilibrium. And the, below this cerebrum, uh, brainstem and the spinal cord. When you see that brain uh, from outside, you, you first see the scalp, the skin, and the bone, the skull. Below the bone, you will see the meninges, the membranes wrapping the brain. They have three membranes, the dura, the most uh, outside and the toughest membrane. And the middle membrane is called arachnoid membrane. And the innermost in contact with the brain tissue is a pia. In between the arachnoid membrane and pia, you can see the fluid called the spinal, sp uh, cerebrospinal fluid. And this brain is pretty well protected. And the, when you see that the brain tissues under microscope, you can see the uh, neuron, the real nerve cells, and the glial cells, uh, astrocyte, oligodendrocytes, ependymal cells, microcytes. Let's review the brain functions. Frontal lobe functions as the executive of the brain. It has a cognitive function, make a judgment, process emotions, happiness, zealous, sadness. It has a broker speech center. When the tumor locates there, patients cannot express what they want. Temporal lobe also has a Wernicke speech center. When the tumor uh, impairs the function, patients can talk a lot. They speak fine, but it doesn't make any sense. It's called uh, receptive aphasia. It has a memory function, processed emotion different, different from the uh, uh, those emotions of frontal lobe. It's mainly uh, done by amygdala. Please look at the other uh, picture here. The amygdala 
locates in the part of the uh, temporal lobe, uh, it controls the anger and the fear. Parietal lobe processes sensory information, touch, temperature, uh, taste. And as you see, the main primary somatosensory cortex locates in the uh, parietal lobe. The primary motor cortex controlling voluntary muscle movements are in the uh, part of the frontal lobe at the end, just in front of the central gyrus. And the cerebellum function, we know it controls the body uh, positions equilibrium. When you uh, see inside the brain uh, at the level of uh, corpus callosum, which connect the right and left hemispheres, you can see the uh, uh, thalamus, which is the, in the center. The thalamus is very important. It relaying sensory or motor signals from the, uh, the spinal cord, all the other uh, brain parts, and the brain uh, to the uh, spinal cord. It also regulates the alertness and the consciousness. Hypothalamus is below the thalamus. It, it um, the, uh, produces the uh, hypothalamus hormones, especially releasing hormones, corticotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, and also uh, it controls the weight and the appetite. And the, you see the uh, uh, the pituitary uh, in the center, it produces the pituitary hormone. And the basal ganglia uh, is also in the deep inside the brain, uh, each side. It has a, a motor controlling fob function. And also patients with a, a, the uh, Parkinson's disease, they have a problem with this basal ganglia. And the substantia nigra, which uh, locates in the uh, upper part of the midbrain. Hippocampus is a very important because it, it has a function of learning and the memory. So the patients with the Alzheimer's disease often have the problem in this area, hippocampus. The primary motor cortex locates in front of the central sulcus and the primary somatosensory cortex uh, posterior to the central sulcus. The motor cortex controls the fine and skilled voluntary muscle movement. Uh, depending on the area, for example, if the tumor locates somewhere here, it affects the uh, fine movements of the face, facial muscles. The sensory somatic cortex, it processes the, all the sensation coming from the body. For example, uh, if there are some problem here, you cannot process the uh, uh, sensation of the, the taste or even smell. Or if you have a problem way up here, you may not feel the sense of the body's like uh, abdomen. The tissues of brain and spinal cords have a neurons and the glial cells. The neuron is the fundamental unit of the brain sending and receiving the signals uh, to the other neurons and the other uh, terminal organs such as muscle cells. It has a cell body, nucleus, and the dendrite, elongated axons wrapped by the uh, protecting myelin and the axon terminal, the synapses, relaying the uh, signals through the neurotransmitters. At birth, we have about 100 billion neurons. But during, this, uh, during our lifetime, we lose some of them, just a few percent of this uh, 100 billion neurons. Glial cells are supporting cells, uh, has an astrocyte, oligodendrocyte, ependymal cells, microglial cells. The function of astrocytes is to control the blood-brain barrier and the uh, blood flow to the brain. It also believed to produce the neurotransmitters. Its number of astrocytes is as many as neurons or even more. Oligodendrocytes produce the myelin that insulating and protecting shift on the axons. Ependymal cells are lining cells of the ventricle. It regulates and produces cerebrospinal fluid. 
Microglial cells are macrophages. It has some immune function. It clears the, uh, the brain uh, environment and also attack those harmful bacteria or other viral uh, agents. Pathologists used to diagnose and classify brain tumors by looking the tissues under microscope. About five years ago in, in the fourth edition, WHO revolutionized the brain tumor classification by using the newly found information of uh, molecular genetics of tumor cells. Last year, WHO reclassified again by incorporating methylation profiling of the tumors into the molecular and the morphological parameters. And that they also changed the way to grade the uh, uh, brain tumors. We used to use the uh, Roman uh, symbols, but now we use the Arabic numerical symbols, two, three, four. It's a good thing to reclassify the brain tumors based on newer technology and the information because the treatment response and the prognosis correlate more accurately with these molecular and the methylation profiles rather than morphological features. But the problem is that the data of numerous previous clinical studies may not be accurate because these informations were not available at that time. And if this molecular and the methylation informations were incorporated, the study findings and the results may be different from what we know. Let's see uh, what has been changed. Now uh, we have a, now the adult type diffuse glioma has a three uh, types. Astrocytoma IDH mutant, oligodendroglioma IDH mutant, and the IP19, uh, 1P19Q codilated, and the glioblastoma IDH wild type. The previous glioblastoma IDH mutant types reclassified to the uh, uh, high-grade astrocytoma IDA mut uh, mutant. And the oligoastrocytoma is no longer recognized in the fifth edition. The interesting thing is the presence of third mutation, EGFR amplification, chromosomes, uh, gain of 7 and deletion 10, and the histone 3 F3A G34M mutations are considered and treated as a glioblastoma now, even though the morphologically it, it is, it, they are low grade. And uh, uh, CDK2NA homozygous deletion is now grade, grade 4, even though morphologically it's a low grade, which means uh, without necrosis or microvascular hyperplasia. I will discuss a little more later. Pediatrics will be discussed in the, uh, in, in the future. As you see, there are hundreds of uh, subclassification. Again, the Shivanoma is the uh, uh, glial cell tumor of the uh, uh, peripheral nerves especially acoustic nerves. And the meningioma will be discussed. And the central uh, primary uh, CNS lymphoma will be discussed. And there are, there are many, many, many uh, subtypes of brain tumor. But those are very rare. Now let's move to the clinical part of the brain tumor. Patients with a brain tumor may present with the generalized symptoms such as headache, seizure, or cognitive dysfunction, or focal neurological deficits depending on the location of the tumor. Headaches occurs in 50% of patients, usually dull, bifrontal, constant, frequently tension type, less commonly migraine type, having photophobia, incapacity, and the nausea. It's worse at night after changes in body position, such as Balsalva maneuver, which increase the intracranial pressure. Seizures occur in 50 to 80% of patients and is mostly focal seizures, but may evolve into bilateral tonic clonic seizures. Seizure is more common in low grade uh, brain tumor and the smaller lesions. It's less common in high grade or metastatic brain tumors. Cognitive functions include the changes in mood, personality, and the memory impairments, 
and the symptoms of depression, so can be confused with the psychiatry patients. Symptoms of signs of increased intracranial pressure include nausea, vomiting, papilledema, or even in syncope. Large brain tumor can cause high pressure hydrocephalus. Tumors in the primary motor cortex cause muscle weakness, usually relieved by uh, glucocorticoids like a dexamethasone. Tumors in the primary sensory cortex causes sensory loss. It's not following the uh, dermatomal distribution of the spinal cord. Aphasia has uh, two types. Uh, tumors in the frontal lobe near Broca's area causes Broca's aphasia, which is express aphasia. The patients cannot express what they want to say. On the other hand, the tumors in the posterior temporal lobe causes Wernicke receptive aphasia. Patients can talk well, but what they're talking is, doesn't uh, make any sense. Tumors in the dominant parietal lobe and the thalamus can also cause aphasia. Visual and the uh, visual spatial dysfunction uh, occurs in the tumors of uh, occipital lobes and the optic nerves. For imaging studies, MRI scan with a gadolinium IV contrast is the standard imaging study. CT scan of the brain with IV contrast can be done when patients cannot have MRI scan, but it's less sensitive. Please look at this glioblastoma enhancing around the lesions here. Vasogenic edema is common in high-grade glial tumors like a glioblastoma, but not in the low grades. Low-grade tumors are usually not enhancing, so sometimes it's difficult to evaluate the extent of the tumor. IDH mutant brain tumors may be detected in MRI scan by T2 flare mismatch. Please look at this uh, MRI scan. This is the uh, T2 weighted image of the uh, astrocytoma. You can see the very good enhancement. But in the flare image, it's much less. So this mismatch of these images uh, indicates the tumor is an IDH mutant. MR spectroscopy also identifies IDH mutant gliomas because uh, these tumors uh, accumulate to hydroxyglutarate, which can be detected in the spectroscopy. Metastatic brain tumors are often multiple, have a surrounding vasogenic edema. But look at this uh, picture, the um, multiple lesions with a vasogenic edema. MR spectroscopy may distinguish brain abscess or demyelination, like a multiple sclerosis from brain tumor. Functional MRI to help plan maximum safe resection. And now uh, I like to show you the uh, meningioma uh, arise in the uh, meninges. It doesn't infiltrate to the brain, but it compresses the normal brain tissue. Uh, this is a primary CNS lymphoma. It uh, shows the homogeneous uh, enhancement. And uh, when they measure the uh, relative cerebral blood volumes, it is lower compared to the gly glioblastoma. Patients commonly present symptoms before diagnosis established by tissue examination. If clinical evaluation shows typical pictures of primary brain tumor, then we need to treat the symptoms of a brain tumor. Glucocorticoids like a dexamethasone for severe headache, vasogenic edema, impending herniation, neurological deficits, and the anti-seizure drugs for seizures or suspicion of seizure. Usually we use levitracetam, the Keppra, for the seizure, but be careful the dosage it has to be adjusted depending on the uh, uh, kidney function. Sometimes urgent neurosurgery consultation is required for the large symptomatic tumors causing high intracranial pressure or impending herniation. If suspected for metastatic brain tumor, then you need to search for the primary cancers with a CT of the body or other tests like a PET CT scan. If suspicious for primary CNS lymphoma, please avoid the glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are toxic to lymphoma cells. It lies that uh, cells may cause false negative biopsy in about 50% of patients. 
When you suspect the CNS lymphoma, lumbar puncture for cytology, flow cytometry, uh, immunoglobin heavy chain, gene rearrangement uh, is, it has to be done. But no lumbar puncture for large tumor midline shift, obstructive hydrocephalus, or mass effect on the fourth ventricle because of risk of herniation. If non-neoplastic lesions are suspected, like a, a abscess or others, lumbar puncture, MR spectroscopy, and the repeat imaging studies at interval may be necessary. For the glucocorticoids, usually we use dexamethasone 10 mg IV followed by uh, 4 mg every 6 hours or 8 mg every 12 hours. can be given by mouth. It should be uh, wind off after neurological symptoms are stabilized. It's a very strongly uh, not recommended to continue high dose of glucocorticoids. For diagnosis, we need to have a brain tumor tissues. For most of the primary brain tumors, surgical resection through craniotomy is done for both diagnosis and treatments. But if surgery is not feasible, like a non-resectable tumor or located in, the, uh, in an eloquent location, essential functioning area like a, a thalamus or basal ganglia, then stereotactic biopsy is done. For lymphoma, also stereotactic biopsy is done because lymphoma is not a surgical condition. After the tissue sample is obtained, it, it is examined for histopathology and the molecular genetic studies like a IDH mutation or chromosome 1p19 q codilation. Metastatic brain tumor usually do not need a biopsy unless no known primary sites are found or MRI not typical for metastatic lesions. For meningioma, uh, we manage differently. If MRI showed the typical appearance and the asymptomatic, then we just observe patients without doing any anything. But if the symptomatic due to large tumor, then surgery is recommended. If location is not a really good for surgery, then empiric radiation therapy without biopsy can be done in selected patients. Stereotactic brain biopsy has two kinds, frame-based biopsy, traditional, uh, and the more recently, frameless stereotactic uh, biopsy using computerized link between the tumor and the surface landmarks, fiduciaries like this. Testing for molecular genetic biomarkers is so important nowadays because these biomarkers can guide uh, diagnosis classification, treatment, and predict prognosis. IDH mutation is seen in astrocytoma and oligodendroglioma, not in glioblastoma. We used to have an IDH mutant glioblastoma, but those are reclassified as a astrocytoma IDH mutant grade 4 in new edition. Atrix nucleus is seen in astrocytoma, not in oligodendroglioma. Chromosome 1p19q codilation is only seen in oligodendroglioma. When tumor has CDK and 2A and the B homozygous deletion, it means the tumor is astrocytoma grade 4 because those are very aggressive tumor. TERP mutation, EGFR amplification, and or combined chromosome 7 gain and 10 loss means the tumor is glioblastoma even though that tumor has a morphological features of low grade. Histone H3K27 mutation means tumor is diffuse midline glioma grade 4. MGNT promoter methylation is a very important. If can be positive or negative glioblastoma. If it's a positive, the patients with a positive MGNT promoter methylation tumor respond to the chemotherapy well, so they just need to have a chemotherapy without radiation therapy, especially when the patients are elderly or frail. And if they are negative, then uh, chemotherapy is not given because it's not, it doesn't work. Only radiation is a treatment. BREF V600 mutation test may be done in glioblastoma or diffuse high-grade glioma because uh, we have uh, anti-BREF MEK uh, inhibitors to treat those patients. If IDH1R132H mutation negative, 
the most of the uh, IDH mutation means IDH1 R123H. But if it's a negative, then you have to look for non-canonical IDH mutation subtypes uh, like uh, uh, IDH1 codon 132 or IG2 codon 132 by sequencing like a, a new generation sequencing because that changed the diagnosis and the treatment unless patients are older than 55 years because all the patients usually have a negative IDH mutation. IDH mutation negative means IDH wild type, so I just want you to know it may confuse you. Liquid biopsy is important. Well, it's an emerging way of diagnosis. Uh, this above molecular test that bind brain tumor tissues. Recently, researchers in the University of Cambridge in UK developed a method to detect brain tumor without, uh, with the blood and the urine, where they can find the circulating cell-free DNAs. Circulating uh, cell-free DNAs are shed from brain tumors. For treatment of glioblastoma, surgical resection is preferred, but if it's not physical, stereotactic biopsy is done to acquire tumor tissue for diagnosis. For resection, the greater extension, uh, extent of the resection, the better the survival. But to avoid eloquent areas, those essential functioning areas like a thalamus basal ganglia, Functional MRI, diffusion tensor images, awake craniotomy, or intraoperative real-time MRI may be used. Awake craniotomy? Yes, patients are awakened during the surgery, but they are still under uh, local anesthesia. 5-amylolevulinic acid uh, is used to make a tumor tissue photosensitive. Patients given this 5-aminolevulinic uh, acid about three hours before surgery. And the surgeon opens the brain and then using a blue light surgical microscope, he can distinguish the brain tumor from normal tissues. How? Because those uh, brain tumors emit uh, fluorescent red lights. So the surgeon can distinguish the tumor from normal tissue for precise uh, resection. Look at this photo. The tumor uh, shows as a, a red colored uh, tissue right here. After the resection, patients need to have a concurrent chemo and radiation therapy, followed by uh, adjuvant chemotherapy, use temozolomide for six cycles. As I mentioned in the previous slide, temozolomide chemotherapy uh, is active in patients with MGMT methylated glioblastoma but not in the MGNT unmethylated tumor. And for elderly patients, you can use the short course radiation therapy uh, over three weeks instead of six weeks. About three to five weeks after the surgery, uh, then patients need to have uh, radiation therapy using involved field radiation therapy over six weeks. Usually, uh, three-dimensional conformal radiation therapy is used, but more recently, uh, intensity modulated radiation therapy is used more because it's more precisely target that tissues. And more recently, volumetric modulated arc therapy, VMAT, is even better. Uh, please look at these pictures. Uh, three-dimensional conformal radiation therapy target that tumors, but what about the organs at risk? They still can be irradiated radiate, and the damaged. But with the intensity modulated radiation therapy, it kind of uh, modulate the uh, intensity, uh, so give a less radiation around these areas to sparing that organ at target. For elderly or frail patients, uh, total, 40 centi uh, for, uh, total 40 grays over three weeks is used. Even 25 gauge over five days also show that uh, um, effective. The side effects of radiation therapy include fatigue, anorexia, hair loss, and the skin rash in the scalp. Long term, they may have neurocognitive toxicity, leukoencephalopathy, or endocrinopathy. Oh, the uh, VMAT, the modern volumetric modulated arc therapy, can shorten the radiation therapy 
time per fraction to two minutes. So it's a highly uh, useful for the children who cannot stay still for a long time. Stereotactic radio surgery delivers high dose radiation in a single treatments like a gamma knife. Unless it hits the tumor, small tumor precisely, it may increase the normal uh, tissue damage next to the target. Stereotactic radiotherapy uses the same technique, same machine, but it, the radiation is given over two to five divided treatments. So it has less risk of tissue damage. Proton penetrates tissues and stops immediately after hitting that target called the Bragg effect. Please look at this uh, picture. The normal photon radiation, it passed through the whole tissues here, but the proton beam stops right after the uh, uh, targets, sparing normal tissues. It's especially useful for uveal melanoma, skull base, or spinal tumors. Temozolomide, Temodar, is the chemotherapy of choice for glioblastoma. It is given concurrently during radiation therapy at 75 mg per meter squared. And uh, after radiation therapy, it's given as adjuvant maintenance therapy at those 150 mg titrate up to 200 mg per meter squared per day for five days in a 28-day cycle, for total six cycles. But as I mentioned earlier, when the tumor has an MGMT methylation negative, uh, temozolomide is not very effective. So especially for elderly such patients, patients uh, they may not need to have a temozolomide, just the radiation therapies alone. Additional bevacizumab did not improve over survival, so it's not used as a first-line therapy, but FDA approved its use only for recurrent symptomatic disease because it reduced the uh, peritumoral edema. Alternating electric field, TT field, can be used during temozolomide adjuvant therapy. In a randomized study, it increased the over survival by about five months, but the study was not well designed and uh, it's not well accepted by uh, many experts of brain tumor. Things to remember with the temozolomide therapy is that the, the temozolomide is taken on an empty stomach during concurrent radiation with a concurrent radiation therapy, especially when used with a dexamethasone steroid, pneumocystis prophylaxis has to be done with a Bactrim DS three times a week until absolute lymphocytes counts rise over 800 per meter, uh, microliter. It, all, it causes thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, and the lymphopenia. So during concurrent therapy, CVC is done every week. And then if the platelet counts uh, drop less than 100,000, absolute nutrient count less than 1,500, or hepatotoxicity over grade two, then hold uh, temozolomide. During adjuvant therapy, uh, do CBC on day uh, 22 and the day 29. For nausea, ondansetron, zofran, oral can be given uh, 30 minutes before temozolomide intake. Gross total of subtotal resection uh, is recommended for older glioblastoma patients. When they are uh, age over 70 with a good physical performance, then uh, patients still need to have a concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide chemotherapy, but radiation therapy can be short course, 40 uh, gray in 15 fractions, given over three weeks instead of regular six weeks. When aged over 70 with a poor physical performance or uh, having comorbidities, then you have to check MGMT methylation profile. If it's uh, a positive, then temozolomide chemotherapy alone, or you still can give a short uh, radiation therapy. If the MGMT methylation negative or unknown, then uh, don't give a temozolomide, just give a short course radiation therapy or palliative care. As I mentioned that alternating electric fields, the patients have to carry that uh, the uh, generate, portable generator uh, as a backpack, and then this is connected to the uh, electrically wired patches uh, attached, adhered on the shaved scalp. 
and the duration of use is at least over 18 days a day, uh, 18 hours a day. So you have to carry almost all day long. The design of the study was not very well accepted, and it is not very popular. For treatment of high-grade astrocytoma, it's a little bit different from that of glioblastoma. After surgery, patients uh, receive radiation therapy followed by adjuvant uh, temozolomide without concurrent temozolomide and the radiation therapy. Concurrent chemotherapy and the radiation was not better than radiation alone. So there is no need of concurrent chemo and radiation therapy. For astrocytoma, we use temozolomide like a glioblastoma but the adjuvant therapy is given over 12 cycles instead of six cycles. For oligodendroglioma, grade three, uh, same after surgery, radiation therapy followed by adjuvant chemotherapy only for six cycles used. And also the uh, regimen of chemotherapy is not temozolomide, it's a PCV. PCV consists of procovazine, uh, CCNU, which is lomustin, and the vincristine. But temozolomide may substitute the PCV chemotherapy. For low-grade astrocytoma, glioblastoma, the grade 2, simple observation without uh, treatment after complete or near complete resection is recommended, but you need to do a follow-up with the MRI at 3, 6, and 12 months to check for any recurrence. The study showed that uh, immediate radiation therapy was not better than uh, delayed radiation therapy when the tumor uh, progressed later, later on. But in higher risk patients, for example, after sub-incomplete resection in grade 2 astrocytoma oligodendroglioma, young patients with a subtotal resection or biopsy, as well as older patients uh, who have uh, any resection or biopsy. The survival was longer when treated with radiation followed by PCV adjuvant therapy for six cycles. But uh, young patients with oligodendroglioma with the incomplete resection and if the residual tumor uh, did not cause any neurological deficits other than seizure alone, may also be observed without radiation therapy until disease progressed. It's a very recent uh, recommendation by European Neurological Oncology Association. When the oligodendroglioma is a very diffuse and extensive, requiring whole uh, uh, brain radiation, which can cause severe toxicity, then especially uh, when they have IDH positive uh, chromosome 1P19Q co-deleted. Those are typical oligodendroglioma patients. Chemotherapy alone with the temozolomide for 12 cycles was good uh, when compared with the uh, combined radiation and temozolomide therapy. Patients with the MGMT methylated oligodendroglioma benefit uh, more with the PCV than temozolomide, but temozolomide is easy to give and convenient, so still can be substituted uh, for MP PCV. When glioblastoma or high-grade gliomas recur, the prognosis is poor, but you still can uh, consider surgery if feasible to remove the uh, uh, recurrent tumors. If it's not systemic therapy or irradiation or even alternating electric field, for symptomatic patients with the uh, vasogenic edema, bevacizumab may be a good choice because it reduces the edema improving the symptoms, although it does not uh, improve the, uh, uh, the overall survival. For recurrent low-grade gliomas, again, the surgery if feasible, otherwise chemotherapy. I must mention about pseudoprogression. Uh, as the name said, when you do the follow-up MRI scan, it shows the enlarging lesions, but it may not be the true uh, progression, but uh, pseudo-progression due to tumor necrosis usually occurs within three months after completion of concurrent chemoradiation. 
in about 15 to 30 percent uh, of mostly MGMT methylated glioma patients. You may suspect the pseudo progression when the patient doesn't feel bad, but the specialized MRI may show the decreased uh, relative cerebral blood volume uh, when the patient has a pseudo progression. The biopsy to confirm the pseudo progression is really necessary. If the pseudo progression is suspected, just continue temozolomide adjuvant uh, therapy. The median overall survival of glioblastoma is 12 to 15 months, but I think it is improving as the uh, newer radiation equipment uh, techniques and also the targeted therapy, other new treatments are coming out. The prognosis depends on age. The younger the age, the better the prognosis. Of course, the physical performance and the molecular characteristics such as MGMT methylation positive or IDH mutation positive tumors have a better uh, is associated with a better prognosis. Astrocytoma is a treatable disease uh, having much longer survival, but it's still not curable. Grade 2 IDH mutant uh, astrocytoma 10 to 12 years, grade 3 about 10 years. Grade 3 IDH wild type is not the uh, uh, glioma anymore. It's a belong to glioblastoma according to the newer fifth edition. I like to mention briefly about primary CNS lymphoma. It's a rare, can occur in both normal and uh, immunocompromised patients like HIV positive patients, mostly diffuse large B cell lymphoma. MRI showed the uh, uh, solitary hypodense lesions uh, uh, located deep in the brain, the periventricular regions, corpus callosum, basal ganglia, brainstem, and the cerebellum. Cerebral toxoplasmosis may mimic a CNS lymphoma in MRI scan. When you suspect the CNS lymphoma, you should avoid the corticosteroid, as I mentioned earlier. It can cause false uh, negative uh, biopsy in about 50% of patients. And the lumbar puncture is indicated, uh, but you have to avoid when the patients have severe edema or impending herniation. About 10% of patients have a vitreous involvement, so slit lamp examination may find the vitreous involvement, and the vitreectomy may diagnose the uh, CNS lymphoma, sparing brain biopsy. Most patients need a stereotactic brain biopsy, though, and the CNS lymphoma is not a surgical disease. It's treated with a high-dose methotrexate along with a rituximab and uh, with a temozolomide or cytarabin or vincristine. Usually, uh, consolidation therapy with autologous stem cell transplantation is given. They respond very well with the whole brain radiation, but adding whole brain radiation to chemotherapy did not improve uh, survival. So you give either whole brain radiation or uh, chemotherapy. The chemotherapy is preferred. Meningioma is the most common brain tumor originating from the arachnoid uh, layer of the meninges and are mostly benign. It causes unknown in most of cases. The symptoms are, uh, majority of patients do not have any symptoms or minimal symptoms, but they can have a seizure or focal neurological deficits depending on the location or weakness of extremities, mental changes, obstructive hydrocephalus. And the CT scan will show well-defined extra axial displacing normal brain. Occasionally, you can see the calcification inside the meningioma. The frequent location of meningioma include parasagittal, olfactory grove, supracella, clevus, and the foramen magnum and the cerebellum. And the look at this meningioma in the brain. It pushes the normal tissues but doesn't infiltrate into the brain tissue. The meningioma is classified uh, as class 1, class 2, and the class 3. The treatment of class 1 meningioma, when the size is small and asymptomatic, then we don't do anything. Just follow up with the MRI every 3 to 6 months first, then uh, yearly for 5 months, then every 2 to 3 years. If it's large or symptomatic or growing, then surgical resection is indicated. If it's not feasible, then 
uh, radiation therapy uh, is used. For class 2 and 3 meningioma, again, complete surgical resection is recommended if feasible. After complete resection, adjuvant radiation therapy is not necessary unless patient has uh, 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 the uh, subtotal resection or anaphylactic malignant meningioma. Even after complete resection, the anaphylactic malignant lymphoma need to have an adjuvant radiation therapy. For atypical meningioma, which belong to uh, grade uh, class 2, the follow-up with the MRI at 3, 6, 12 months is necessary then every 6 to 12 months for 5 years, then 1 to 3 years. For malignant anaphylactic meningioma, you have to follow up more frequently with the MRI every 3 to 6 months for the first 3 to 5 years, then every 6 to 12 months. Many research institutions and the universities worldwide are actively doing research in search for better treatments. Recently, last year, a study was published that breath Mutant glioblastoma responded very well to combination of BREF inhibitor and the MEK inhibitor. About 40% of patients treated had a median free survival 18 months. This is not a median oval survival. The median free survival means patient, the cancer did not recur or uh, uh, progressed for almost two years. So the median survival is going to be much longer. And there are three clinical trials ongoing uh, using CAR T cell therapy for glioblastoma. What about oncolyte viral therapy? The engineered adenovirus are directly injected into the wall of resection cavity in the brain after a surgical resection. And the early stage of investigation shows uh, um, some promising signs. And the targeted therapy using ivocidine for IDH1 mutant gliomas, it was very uh, uh, effective. About almost 90% patients have a stable disease, especially uh, when they have a non-enhancing gliomas. PARF inhibitor is also being investigated for treatment of IDH mutant low-grade gliomas. Immune checkpoint inhibitors like uh, Keytruda or uh, Optibo uh, did not show any good results for glioblastoma, but now a uh, combination of uh, this immunotherapy with other drugs are being investigated. A quote from Bible to all brain tumor patients, I will restore you to health and heal your wound, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 30:17. Thank you for watching.